Okay, so today's topic is the number one tools for curriculum transformation for 2020. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jenny James. I'm a learning teaching consultant at Griffith University in Griffith Sciences. Um, the reason why I selected this topic is that in our roles as learning designers, we're often being asked to support the implementation of tools and technologies, and it seems to be rapidly increasing. Um, many of the tools that we're using are emerging technologies, um, and they're the ones implemented by academics and often without <coughs> knowing whether that's the best tool for purpose. So today we've got three fabulous presenters presenting for us. Um, the first one is Sharon. So I'm just going to introduce you to Sharon. So Sharon is a senior curriculum and learning designer at Queensland University of Technology. And Sharon is going to present how she uses Microsoft Excel at QUT to transform learning and teaching. So over to you, Sharon, if you wanna share your application. Okay, great, thank you very much. Today, what I'd like to do is to actually take you back to the future. So in a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a number of images from a particular year. And in the chat window, I would like you to guess what year I'm actually talking about. So I want you to be able to do this without Googling the answer because that takes the fun out of it. And also there are no prizes. So let's start. It was the first time that we heard the name Madonna um, with the release of her single, Like a Virgin. MS-DOS 3.2 was released. It's the first time that we actually saw the Super Mario game. We were rocking along to Bruce Springsteen being born in the USA. And Intel introduces the 30-bit 8386 microcomputer chip. The very first version of Windows is released and what a fabulous version that was. Importantly, Ascolite was also founded in this very same year under its current name. In the cinema, we were actually going back to the future with Michael J. Fox. So I return to my original question, which is what year am I in? Now, if you have guessed 1985, congratulations, you are correct. In 1985, there was another significant event in my life um, as an ex-accounting teacher, but also as an IT teacher. And I have to say, it almost brings a tear to my eye. Well, it doesn't really, but I'm talking about the birth of Microsoft Excel. Now, some have suggested that um, Microsoft Excel is a bit of an ugly duckling um, of the Microsoft Office suite. Um, it might not have the showiness of PowerPoint or the pizzazz of Microsoft Word, but to me, it's a thing of wonder and beauty. And it's a piece of software that has uh, worked with me over the past 35 years in my role as a teacher, as a learning designer and curriculum designer. So now what I'd like to do is to share with you three ways that I use spreadsheets to support TEL um, for asynchronous learning, synchronous learning, and also for assessment. So the first way that I use it is to generate flashcards for students to help them learn terminology relating to their discipline. So before, even though that learning terminology is on the lower end of Bloom's taxonomy, students really have to have that mastered to be able to then move up into the higher levels of thinking. So what I do is I combine the humble spreadsheet with um, the Quizlet application. And it allows me to create electronic flashcards and print um, flashcards. It also um, allows me to create tests and games for students. Now, whilst Quizlet is not a technology that's currently supported by my university, um, it's just that I haven't asked at this point whether um, we could use it. But it is absolutely easy to use. It is free and it does have a range of accessibility features. So things such as large lettering, it's got strong contrast. It does have a read aloud feature and also it does have a um, voiceover feature for mobile devices. And importantly, Something that I look for when I'm selecting technology is, is device agnostic. So we'll work on any device, 
And as you'll see in a moment, it will also work without a device. So let's see how it works. So basically I create my simple spreadsheet. In one column I have my uh, terms and then I've got the definition in the second column. I then highlight that and press Control C to actually copy that information to my clipboard. I then jump over into the Quizlet website and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Create. I can then enter a title and a description for uh, my flashcards. And then I click on this green link here, which asks me to import from Word, Excel or Google Documents. Gives me this window and I can then just click in there, pressing Control V um, to actually make that appear. And as you can see, my flashcards have already been created below. I then can click on the Import button and then I say I want them created. And that's all there is to creating flashcards for students. Students can then go through and read the flashcards. They can click on the back to get their definitions and they can then move on to their next flashcards. Now with any extra intervention from me, all I've done is upload my spreadsheet of my terms. Quizlet has lifted this and has now created a series of quizzes. So for example, there's 48 cards remaining. So I get this information, I click got it, and it gives me a question. I can then click on the answer and it lets me know straight away if I'm correct. I just click anywhere to get my next um, particular question. This one I'll get wrong. So I can click on hypothesis and it tells me that I'm incorrect and tells me what the correct answer is. And then I press any key to continue on. So that's um, in learn mode. If I just go back. It also generates for me, without my intervention, a series of test questions for students to be able to test themselves around their understanding of those definitions. So these are ones where they can write. There are matching questions, multiple choice, um, and true, false at the bottom. And they can also check their answers um, when they have finished that particular test. I also mentioned that it has the ability to create games. So again, I've not done anything to this and it has created a matching game. So there is a, um, a countdown timer and students need to drag and drop the various terminology to be able to, um, to match. They also have a gravity game, but I quite haven't worked out how, that, um, how to play that particular game. But there is another game as well that is all built into this particular app. Now there are a range of different features that we have over here. Um, but I'm just going to show you these three dots here and um, what you can actually see in here. Um, so you do have the ability to embed. You can actually get a link if you want to put a link in your LMS, but you have that ability to actually get embed code and you can embed that directly in your Blackboard site or other LMS um, that you might have. Importantly, I did say that you don't need to ha necessarily have a device to be able to use it. So if you didn't want um, your students to, um, to have this feature to be able to use, you can click on the print option and it act actually created a table for you of those definitions that could then be printed out for students or the PDF put into the Blackboard site. It also has a glossary layout and importantly, it's got a variety of different um, flashcards available as well. Um, that you can see there. And it has instructions here on how to actually print these for students um, and also the PDF that you can actually download. So that's the first way that I use Microsoft Excel. Um, so now for the second way that I use it. And this is for um, when I'm looking at synchronous um, online learning. So although Zoom um, as a webinar software it does have the ability to randomly assign students to breakout rooms. There are times when we have students who are working in groups for the entire semester. So we want specific groups of students to be in particular groups and we don't want to every time we run a class have to manually move 80 students individually to different rooms. So this is where Microsoft Excel pairs up with Zoom to create pre-assigned rooms. So in a similar way, I start with my humble spreadsheet. In one column, I have the names of my groups and I have the email addresses of my students um, in the other column. I then can jump over to the QUT site 
and I can click on my meetings and I can select the meeting that I want to work with, which is this particular one. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see that I have this edit meeting. So I click on the edit meeting and down towards the bottom, I've got various meeting options and I want to check this one here, which is the breakout room pre-assign. So I'll just click on that. And that then gives me this option here to import from a CSV file. So I can click on this and it gives me this so I can drag and drop it or in this case I will browse and pick up my CSV file and there we have it. All my students in my class have now been pre-assigned to their particular rooms. I can then click on the save button and just down a bit further and um, save that as well. Now what I can do is I can go over to my Zoom application and I can click on the start of the meeting. So here I am in the Zoom meeting and my participants have now arrived at the meeting. So we've done some work and now I want to move them into their breakout rooms that I've pre-assigned. So I can click on breakout rooms and you'll notice here that Hyson is the only member of the class that's actually in a pre-assigned room. Now the reason for this, and it's quite strange with Zoom and I don't know why they do it, but if a student arrives in the room before the teacher, they are automatically put into um, the pre-assigned rooms. But if they arrive after the teacher, then um, they are not automatically put in there. However, um, all of your work hasn't gone to waste. And what you can do is you can click on the recreate button here and recover to pre-assigned rooms. And now all the students are in their various rooms. So that's how easy that is. Um, I can then go and open my rooms. And here I am in a meeting with um, Catherine. And you can see that Hank is in a different room and as the host, he's clicked on the needs help button and I get a message whichever room I'm in. Um, and I can either go and join Hank in that breakout room to see what the issue is, or I can choose to leave the room, which I will do now. Um, and then I can close the window and that um, will bring everybody back to that main room. So that's the second way that I use Microsoft Excel. And now for the third and final way that I will show you that I use it, and that is to create Blackboard quizzes. So basically I set up again my humble spreadsheet. I've got uh, my question types in one column, my questions, and then my various answers and whether they're correct or incorrect um, if they're auto marked questions. So then I just jump over to Blackboard and I'm going to go to Test Surveys and Tools. And I can then um, click on Tools and I want to build a pool this time. So I'm going to click on that, just enter a name and click Submit. So at this screen, I'm going to choose to upload my questions. I can browse, find my um, text file because for Blackboard it needs to be in a text file format and I can then click on um, the open button and I then hit submit. And there we have it, all my questions from my spreadsheet have now been imported into that particular pool. Now, just like a good cooking show, um, I have prepared earlier um, an actual exam paper. So I can click on my link to my exam, I can begin the exam and there you can see other various um, questions that I have um, already there. So there you have it. There are three ways to use Excel uh, spreadsheets in 2020 and I can use it to support asynchronous learning, synchronous learning and also assessment. I would like to thank you for uh, listening to my presentation but I'd also like to acknowledge my fabulous work colleagues who generously helped me out on a Friday afternoon to participate in a strange but fun um, Zoom meeting to help me with this presentation. So thank you very much. Thanks, Sharon. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I think I just saw one in the chat, which was from Simone um, when you were talking about Quizlet. Um, can you embed this into other programs and is it accessible? Um, so in terms of accessibility, um, in what I have investigated, um, there is certain degrees of accessibility with it. So it does have um, a large um, area for students who, um, you know, who might have um, motor issues or things like that. 
So it has a large um, swipe area for them. It does have large lettering. It's got strong contrast. Um, the font is a really clear font that they use. Um, it does have a read aloud feature, which is, um, I think, particularly good for students whose um, first language might not be English. Um, so they can hear the pronunciation, but also for students that are, are learning your discipline specific language, just how they pronounce some of those more complicated words. Um, it also does support most languages as well. So there is the feature that, you know, students do have the potential to change it into their, their native language. Um, and it does have a voiceover feature for their mobile app um, on Android and um, iOS devices. So um, it will actually read to them um, all of that. Um, and it is device agnostic, but it's also too that you can actually um, print as well, which I think sort of covers off on that, um, the accessibility. So in terms of products that are accessible, I think it does have a lot of, uh, of those features. Um, basically what happens is with the flashcards, um, students can use them on an, iOS, on an iOS device or any other mobile device that they might have, happen to have. Um, but they, you can also just provide a link which will take them directly to the website. Um, but you've also got the ability to print. Um, but you can also embed um, in your Blackboard site as well. Now, one of the things that I did find is that if I'm logged into Quizlet as the, um, the academic, I can actually um, edit my um, flashcards directly from within Blackboard rather than having to go to the, um, the Quizlet site, but your students can't actually edit your cards. That's great. I think there was one other question from Sandy. She was just asking if there's an Excel template for the structure to input into Blackboard. Yes, there is. Um, so there is one available on the um, Blackboard website um, that you can actually use for that. But I've found, my academics have found um, it's saved them a lot of time, but it also means that it's also in a human readable format for them for moderation pro, um, purposes as well. Um, and I will also say that the amount of time um, that even being able to import into Zoom the pre-set up groups, because we have a lot of group works in the, um, the schools that I'm working with, um, it has saved them a lot of work because in the first couple of weeks they were actually manually moving students into groups and I was, until I found a better way to, to actually do that. So, Well, thank you. I think Roger might have posted the link um, there to be able to get to that template perhaps. But anyway, we can perhaps share it later on. Um, so yeah, so thanks Sharon for presenting for us and for reminding us that we don't need to use the latest and greatest emerging technologies and that we can revert to tools we've had um, all along and just use them in more creative ways. So thank you.